So good, good morning. morning. I'd, I'd like, like to thank, thank you guys for inviting me and thanks for the change in schedule. So I'm going to talk to you about the suturing, so a little bit of change in, in gear, also um, a restrictive procedure. Uh, my main disclosure is that I'm a consultant for Apollo, which is the main, um, the main part of this talk, but again, um, I'll let you guys think of, of the data and what you, what you think of that. So when we talk about treatments of obesity, and we've just heard about the balloon, uh, when you go from the left of the slide to the less efficacious, uh, low-risk procedures in exercise, and then if you have all the um, bariatric procedures that are uh, available in the market, uh, there's basically a treatment gap because as, As you guys, guys all know, only 1 to 2% two two of, of patients who are eligible for surgery end up undergoing surgery. So, so this leaves uh, the market gap that, that we have, and this is why this talk or this session is really important. Um, so with, with suturing, it basically started off with Thompson in 2004, uh, looking at the um, gastric uh, gas, uh, patients who had weight regain or insufficient weight loss after ruin y gastric bypass. And, and with meta-analyses, it's shown, shown that anything bigger than two centimeters, centimeters um, those, those patients are more likely to regain weight. weight. So, so in a randomized controlled trial, trial um, he showed that um, patients who have the outlet reduced with the suturing device, as you can see in the video, um, lose weight. And then um, this is maintained after the, their diet is, um, is removed, as opposed to the sham people who um, regain their weight after their diet, is, uh, their diet restriction is removed. Um, so, so this uh, work, work in 2004, 2004 lended Fogel in 2008 to um, use the same endocinch device to copy um, the surgical sleeve and do that endoscopically. And this was a study um, that was presented in 2008 and everyone got really excited with those results because as you can see here, um, why did I go back? Uh, as you can see here, the um, excess weight loss at 12 months was 58%, and the BMI um, category uh, excess weight loss was striking, especially in the patients with a low BMI of, of uh, less than 35. So a lot of people thought this study was too good to be true, and it was then repeated um, again by Thompson um, and, and Shower with 18 patients, 14 patients completed the 12-month follow-up, Mean BMI was 38, the procedure time took on average two hours. No adverse events, but the weight loss wasn't as significant, although everything was uh, pretty significant, but it wasn't that, that striking. And this was because the, um, the suture um, that they used with the endocinch wasn't full thickness, so when they go went back and scoped the patients at two months, a lot of the sutures had broken uh, down. So, so we, we then move, move on, on to the overstitch device, device, which is um, a device that's attached to a double channel endoscope. And it's similar to um, the curved needles that you see surgically, but what it does have in addition is a helix or a tissue screwer that enables you to get full thickness um, tissue per uh, purchase. And so the, um, this was uh, developed in, in the Mayo Clinic. Uh, where they uh, use the, endos uh, the endoscopic overstitch device um, to reduce the volume of the stomach and essentially produce something that looked like a surgical sleeve. So this cartoon um, shows you a sort of a, a cartoon of what happened. So the scope is inserted um, into the stomach. The patient undergoes, is, this is done under general anesthesia. And you mark the anterior and posterior line of the greater curvature with APC um, to sort of keep your, your landmarks. And then you insert the, um, the overstitch device on the double channel endoscope. And using the helix, you ensure that you get full thickness um, plications. And with a running suture of about between four to six sutures, um, you plicate the stomach, imbricate it, and then uh, pull it together. And you start all the way from, from the antrum and then you go all the way through to the fundus. And the next video is... Um, 
do the mask. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm not, not going to show you this whole video because it's the same thing. Um, but I'll, uh, this is uh, just in a real life uh, patient. Um, so, so again, here, here the same, same thing is you mark you mark the uh, you mark the patient with APC, and then um, you use the device um, as you can see in a second um, to get full thickness uh, bites. And the procedure takes anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on this, uh, the size of the, the patient. So this is the helix, and that's the first bite. If you can move to the uh, rest of the video, just the last 10, 20 seconds. Okay, so what you can see here is the second layer, and um, you've managed to... Um, imbricate the stomach quite nicely. Um, it can get a lot uh, very bloody at the end, but not, nothing compared to surgery, I guess. Um, and once you see here is that you're cinching uh, close the stomach, and the final end product is something that will end up looking like a sleeve. Um, it's sort of between a sleeve and a lap band. You leave a little bit of a fundus uh, open. And so this is the inspection. Um, you, you start, start off at the incisura, and, and what you can see here is a tight, um, tight endoscopic sleeve. Okay. So, so we, we published our first data um, two years, years ago now with 10 patients. The majority were women. Um, average age of 43 with a mean BMI of 45. We controversially uh, used patients who did not undergo surgery, so we had a higher BMI category of 68. Um, measured this change in stomach length, so from the pylorus into the GE junction before and after, and there was a significant change in the size of the stomach. Uh, there's a significant change in BMI, and what you can see, the graph on the left side shows the six-month data with an average weight loss of 33 kilos and the excess weight loss of um, 33%. This is probably driven by our biggest, uh, biggest patient there. Since then, there have been a mul multitude of uh, published data. This was um, an abstract presented last year at DDW, um, which Thompson spearheaded. We were part of 126 patients. Again, the average age was 40, um, majority again female. And if you look at the 0, um, 6, and 12 months weight loss, you get a 19% total body weight loss with a significant drop in BMI. Um, this is our updated uh, data from Cornell. Um, so far, we've done a multitude of patients with 92 patients with at least a one-month follow-up. The mean age is 41, and again, the majority are female. And if you look at the um, first table, um, there was a significant change in both waist circumference, BMI drop, also, as, you, as other studies have shown, an improvement in LDL and A1C. And if you look at the total body weight loss, um, it's, it's sustained at 18% uh, at 12 months. Because I had a higher BMI group, we dichotomized it into patients with a high BMI or a low BMI, and the results are similar between the two groups. Um, this was published by uh, Lopez Nava just last month, and he also presented um, his one-year follow-up data. And the key take-home from this slide is uh, showing you that adherence to both nutrition on the left side of the table and psychological follow-up ensures that you get um, a higher excess weight loss and a higher total body weight loss, which, which kind of makes sense with um, all these programs. Um, this is um, data we're going to present at DDW this year, and it's a combination of our center, Lopez Nava in Spain, and um, Mayo Clinic. Uh, we've combined our data of 242 patients. The mean age is 44. Again, the majority are female with a BMI of uh, 37.8. And uh, this graph essentially shows the same data that you've been seeing. So at 12 months, you have a total body weight loss of 18%. And at 18 months, you have a total body weight loss of 19%, 19%, which is similar between all three sites. 
Um, we looked at the, the weight loss between the three sites, so Madrid, New York, and Rochester, and although there wasn't statistically significant difference between all three centers, everyone does the technique slightly differently. Madrid was, looks better, and we think it's because Europeans um, follow instructions a little bit better. Um, in, in terms, terms of, of adverse events, events um, a lot of these were early adverse events, and in the last year there have been none. This is between the three centers, um, one perigastric inflammation, inflammatory serous collection that was drained by IR, and it's thought to be due to the full thickness, um, full thickness sutures that you get. One patient with a, a sub a massive pulmonary embolism, and then pneumoperitoneum and pneumothorax requiring chest tube placement. The latter was probably because one of the centers used air, and now since everyone switched to CO2, this doesn't happen. We've also used um, the uh, suturing device for weight regain after a sleeve gastrectomy. So uh, this is only on four patients so far. Uh, and, and I know, know George Ede also, also reported this as well. Um, and, and so, so with a six-month follow-up, the weight loss on average is roughly 22 pounds with a total body weight loss of, of 10%. So, so how, how do we think the um, endoscopic sleeve works? So if you look at this study with weight restriction, everyone knows that the yo-yo diet, um, you lose weight and then over time people regain. And this is probably because um, the ghrelin hormone, which is sort of the hunger hormone, uh, goes up in time, as does all the, um, your hunger score and the um, desire to eat. So what happens with um, the endoscopic sleeve is um, this was published by um, the Mayo Group uh, just last month, where they did a gastric scintigraphy or gastric emptying pre-endoscopic sleeve and three months post. And what you can see in the three months post slide is that the majority of the food is still retained in the fundus portion of the stomach, so kind of acting like a lap band. And this is thought to interact with ghrelin, decreasing um, the, the desire to eat because the patient feels full constantly. Um, and, and this, this has also been shown uh, with the change in satiation in the meal tolerance test on those same patients. So um, they had 1,000 kilocalories that were consumed before and uh, versus only 300 afterwards. And the same thing, minutes to satiation was roughly 35 minutes, and then it dropped to um, roughly 11 minutes afterwards. So uh, the future is going to be um, everything we've heard so far. So. Um, uh, either uh, devices that uh, improve satiety and satiation, such as the gastric accommodation, gastric emptying, and the balloons, um, things that interfere with the uh, small intestine, hypothalamus, and then um, uh, psychological and uh, medication. And lastly, I just want to leave you with um, two of my patients who have lost nearly 40% of their total body weight um, at 18 months. Um, and this, uh, this guy was 366 pounds, and he's now 180 and gained a nipple ring. Thank you.